And if you look at it, y is 1 over cos x plus c1. So 1 over cos x plus c1, that quantity squared is just y squared. So this becomes y squared sine of x. Isn't that awesome? Nothing to it. Now, you don't have to check that, but you can check it. That's the most common thing that it very much like, when in doubt, take the derivative, right? Nothing has changed. Now, let me show you a differential equation that is inseparable. Real simple. If I do dy over dx equals x plus y. It's not separable. I'm screwed. There's no way for me to analytically determine this using separations, separation of variables. I'm stuck where I'm at. Okay? All right. Now, let's do, let's do one right here where we, where we end up with a... a I want to give you guys some rules, okay, around separable differential equations. All right. Rule number one. So let me erase this here. Let's move this down right here. Let's go rules for just, they're more guidelines, but if you if you uh, choose to trespass these guide, guidelines, you will suffer at your own hands. Uh, rules for SEP diff EQs, diff EQs. Okay, rule number one is real simple. And we're gonna do this with, with initial points. Rule number one is leave all constants constants with independent variable. Independent variable. That's rule number one. There's really only two of them. Rule number two, don't plug in, don't plug, plug, wow, again, a little too much green tea with, with lunch today, sorry. Don't plug in initial value, value, until um, y or dependent variable, dependent variable is solved for, and then in parentheses or close to it, and I'll, I'll we'll talk more about what that means or close to it. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Um, let's do. I'm going to do dx over dt. Now you got to be careful here because you've got to identify what your independent and your dependent variable is. Okay, I'm going to do 2t plus secant squared t. I'll do a couple of these with you guys over uh, 2u. And I'm going to let u of 0 equal negative 5. All right, so first things first. Is it separable? Yeah, oops, where did I get a 2u from? That should be a 2x. Sorry about that. Got integration by substitution on the brain. Should be a 2x. All right, so here we go. Now, remember, when everything's said and done, we should have one single function that is the solution to this differential equation. So let's do some math. I'm going to do 2x dx. That's kind of nice. Equals 2t plus secant squared t. And then I'm going to put this in parentheses so that I realize that the dt is with it. Now, you may say, wait a second, Ripley. Why didn't you leave the 2? Why didn't you leave the, the constant over there? And you would be exactly correct. Except, in this case, again, these are more guidelines. Sometimes it's easier to break them. And I've been doing this a while, and I noticed that I'm going to take an antiderivative of x squared, and I'm going to end up with, or excuse me, antiderivative of 2x, and end up with x squared. So I just kind of left it there because it was easier to take an antiderivative of 2x than it was to take the antiderivative of just x. I'll show you what happens if, if, I, if I don't leave that behind. All right, so you ready? We're off to the races. This becomes x squared. Now remember, why do I have, I've got these u's. I don't know where these u's came from. x squared, ding dong, equals, and I got t squared plus tan of t, and then plus c, right? I just tack my c right there on the end. Now, in this case, notice that part two says don't plug in initial values until y or your dependent variable, my dependent variable in this case is x, my independent variable is t, is, is solve for or close to it. Now think about this. If I'm going to solve for x, I've got to take the square root of everything, which means when I plug in my independent or my initial values to be able to solve for c, I have to unsquare root everything. And that just seems silly. Okay? So I'm going to do it here. I'm simply going to plug in, let's see, x of 0 equals negative 5. Is that what I said? That's what I said. So I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to have negative 5 squared is equal to negative 5 squared plus, liar, sorry, is equal to 0 squared. 
is equal to 0 squared, because these are t's. See, I fell into my own trap there, right? That's good. You can see how silly this all can be. Plus c. Well, negative 5 squared is 25. 0 squared is 0. Plus tangent of 0 is 0. Plus c, which implies that c equals 25. Now, this implies that x squared equals t squared plus tan of t plus 25. That's a plus, by the way. I don't know what's happening there. So x equals the square root of t squared plus tan of t plus 25. That's how it works. Nothing to it. Now, let me go back on what I said. Let's start with the original. Just real quick. Don't get angry. dx over dt is equal to 2t plus secant squared t all over 2x. Now watch what happens here. If I leave the 1 half behind, and that's fine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of divide these guys in and see what happens. Okay? So I'm going to get x dx is equal to 1 half times, I guess I won't divide them, I'll just leave them there, 1 half times, uh, what do we got? Uh, 2t plus secant squared t. And then of course dt. When I take the antiderivative of these, watch what happens. I get x squared halves is equal to, remember, the integral of a constant times the function is just the constant times the integral of the function, right? So I get t squared plus tan t, and then, of course, plus c out here. When I multiply through by my 2, remember, I'm trying to solve for x, right? So this 2 cancels here, this 2 cancels here, and then when I multiply here, I end up with just a c prime. So x squared equals t squared plus tan t plus c prime, which is exactly the same thing as this. And then I plug in my initial values. All right? Nothing to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that takes care of that. Now, there's a second part of this, which is pretty fun. They're called mixing problems. And what we're going to do is tomorrow in class, I'm going to yap at you for 15 minutes or so. Excuse me. And we're going to talk about how mixing problems work. If you want to get a little ahead and you want to read the section 7.3 about uh, mixing problems, feel free to do so. But they could be kind of confusing, and I think you're going to need some feedback for those. All right? So I will see you tomorrow in class. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for your time and attention. Bye-bye.